Hey guys, welcome to the Hacked Existence tutorial on assembling the 3D printed case that I designed for Joseph Hewitt's Wardriver.uk. So by the end of this video, I'll show you guys how to take a fully assembled Wardriver board, we'll slam it in a case and add a 10,500 milliamp hour battery. So this beast has so much capacity that you can run this thing for days on a single charge without ever turning it off. But we're gonna go ahead and add a one amp USB-C charging circuit to it as well. And I think my favorite piece of the case is the removable antenna holster. So this was something I struggled with with the original dealing with the antennas. So I've added a removable antenna holster that can be taken off for a minimalist approach or left on for storage and throwing in a backpack, you know, makes it super convenient. I don't have loose antennas anymore. I've got little caps here for the SMA plugs that plug on to the holster as well once you put the antennas on. So let's jump into the bill of materials. Okay, so the bill of materials starts with a built out J. Hewitt war driver. So if you don't have one of these yet, you can go check out my tutorial on building out the J. Hewitt war driver UK board, but you're gonna need one of those. And the next thing you're gonna need is the 3d printed parts so we have the base the front plate and a gasket optionally you can print the antenna holster and the antenna plugs and we'll drop this battery into it. It is the 106-0110. This is a 10,500 milliamp hour capacity battery this was 20 bucks on amazon and paired with that We'll have the TP4056 charging circuit. So this is a USB-C circuit that charges at one amp. And I bought this for $2 on Amazon. The hardware all came in a metric hardware kit that I got. So we've got M3 by 20, two of those screws. We've got four of the M3 by 12s, two M3 nuts and four M3 inserts. And then we're going to need a single pole, single throw, three pin slide switch. Bought a pack of 70 of these on Amazon for like $9. So now I have 69 more. And the last optional piece is a JST plug. I bought a pack of 10 of these for $9 on Amazon. I'm gonna put that coming off of the wardriver.uk board between that and the power circuit so that if I need to, I can unplug and lift out my J Hewitt board to work on it or pull the SD card or whatever I need to do there. But that's optional. You can also hardwire it if you don't want to put a plug in line. So let's jump into the build. Okay, so we'll begin by installing the battery into the case and I'm gonna have the wires in the upper left corner here. Now that the battery is all nice and snug there, I'm going to take the charging circuit and it's going to land pointing out through this hole. So I'm just going to line it up there. Then I'm going to pull these wires over to where they need to be and I'll end up cutting them right here. And what we're trying to achieve is wiring our black negative wire off of the battery to this B minus pin here and the red positive wire to the B plus pin here. So I'm going to line them up, cut them to length, strip them back run them through those holes and solder them on from the bottom. All right, so at this point, I just wanna take a second to remind everyone that we are about to cut into the wires coming off of a battery and a very large battery at that. So if you don't know what you're doing, please seek guidance from a professional. All right, now we've got our charging circuit all wired in and test fitted. So the next thing we're gonna do is get out our war driver board. And we'll see on the bottom here, there's five. That's where the red wire is gonna go and black is G. So we're gonna bring the wires in from the top and solder them on the bottom. And for that, I'm gonna use the JST plug. And basically I want that plug to land about here up at the top of the board. So I'm gonna measure that out. And I'm gonna cut these here, strip them back and solder them in. All right, so now that we've got everything test fitted back in our box here, the next thing we're gonna do is take the negative side of the far side of the JST plug, and we're going to solder it onto the out minus port right here on the charging circuit. So I'm gonna do that by checking out the length that I need. And again, I want this plug to land right up here in the corner. So I'm gonna cut it to length, strip it. I'm gonna drive it through the top of the charging circuit and solder it on the bottom side. All right, so the next step is to prepare the positive side of our circuit. So for that, we're going to use the switch and we're gonna chop off one of the pins on one of the ends. It doesn't matter which one. And now I'm gonna move the slide position to the vacant pin so that when we apply power, it doesn't automatically close and turn on. So this would be the off position now. And what we're gonna do here is go from the charging circuit positive out to the center pin and then the bottom pin will hook up to this red wire. So that will let the electricity flow from the battery through the charging circuit 
into the switch where you can turn it on and off, and then out of the switch and into the J Hewitt. So I'm gonna start by reusing one of these cables that I already snapped off, and I'm gonna put one end through the out plus here, and I'll do the other end to the center pin on the switch, uh, measuring the distance of, of how to get it right in there. And don't forget to heat shrink your connections. All right, so at this point, we should have a fully completed power circuit. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this in here and we're going to flip the power switch to on and we're going to see we've got lights on our ESP 32s and our display lights up. So everything is up and running. We should also be able to plug a USB-C cable into our USB-C charging circuit and see that the charging light comes on. And this actually didn't work on the power plug that I use every day. I had to go find a different power plug. So this thing can be a little bit finicky. You might have to try a couple plugs and a couple different uh, cords before you get it working. But at this point, we've got a fully functioning power circuit. So I'm going to unplug this. And now we're going to begin getting the case ready for the final install. So to begin prepping our case, I'm going to use two of the M3 inserts and a little digital soldering iron. And I'm going to melt them into the top receptacles here. All right, now we've got our M3 inserts all melted in. The next step is to put the battery back in. And now we're gonna start on the gasket. And this thing is incredibly fragile. It's extremely thin. It derives its strength from being forced into the uh, bottom of the case. Um, but basically the power circuit is going to land on that strip there. So what I'm gonna start with is cutting out a little piece of double-sided sticky tape. I'm gonna put a double-sided sticky tape in here. We'll lift up the power circuit and slide the uh, gasket into place and get it all mounted. All right, now that we've got our gasket lined up in there, I'm gonna peel this off and we're gonna stick the charging circuit kind of flush in there as good as we can get it with the USB-C sticking out that hole there. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and push the sliding power switch into the little hole for it there with the power switch coming out the top. All right, now we've got a nice flush mount power switch here just sticking right out the top. All right, next we're gonna plug in the two SMA plugs for the antennas and the GPS antenna as well. For the GPS antenna, I'm going to feed the wire through this slot and orient it so that the wire comes out the left side. You can see there's a little trough here to hold it in place from the bottom. So we want the wire to come out the opposite side and this just pressure mounts in and it should pop right into place and have a nice flat mount right on the top. All right, so now I'm gonna take the wires from the two Wi-Fi antennas and kind of move them out of the way. We're gonna use the GPS antenna. And basically the goal here is that it's gonna flow through this trough and plug into the GPS radio on the bottom of the J Hewitt board. So I'm gonna plug that in and then try to get the wire to run through the trough as I slam it into there. And it should fall right into the crate there and be nice and stable. All right, now I'm gonna run this left antenna down the side and plug it into the bottom ESP32 down here. All right, and the other antenna, I'm gonna bring in a loop back up to here. All right, now we've got our wires all nice and tucked in. We'll go ahead and plug in the power and we'll give it a try. Looks like everything is turning on and working. So the next step is to get our front plate mounted on. And so at this point, I will trim down my wires and do a nice tiny little run to get my screen mounted in there. All right, now we've got our display all shortened up, so we'll kick it on and make sure everything works and looks like we're good. So the next step is to take off the screen protector. 
And now with the top case from the back of it, we're gonna press it in and it just pressure fits in there with these little tabs that hold it in place. All right, now we can slam the whole thing together. And we'll start with two of the M3 bolts on the top here. All right, so now to finish assembling the bottom, we have two options here. We can use the short screws and the nuts to run it naked like this. And we've already got the outline of the nut drawn into the 3D print, so we can just drop the nut in there, run the screws through from the front side, and now we're ready. But if we want to add the antenna holder, we're going to need to start by sinking in the remaining two M3 inserts. All right, and if we take the screw and nut back out of the bottom of our case, now we can slide the holster on from the back and use our two longer bolts. Then we can holster our antennas, and we can use our antenna plugs, but we'll also notice that when, we're, when we've got the antennas on, they fit inside these circles here. All right, so at this point, you guys should have a fully built out J Hewitt Wardriver.uk inside of this case that boasts 10,500 milliamp hours of capacity and an optional antenna holder. So time to put this thing to use, get out there, start war driving. I'll see you guys over on wiggle.net. And as always, stay tuned and thanks for watching.